Good afternoon, I am Monica May Martinez and I am here to present my capstone proposal entitled The Philippine Diabetes and Endocrinology Medical Center, a study on improving diabetic and hormonal care in a healing environment through biophilic architecture. In the Philippines, Filipinos enjoy socializing and interacting through food and lifestyle activities. Because of the unhealthy lifestyle people choose, Filipinos have a high risk of developing complications, one of it being diabetes. Diabetes is a disease in which the hormone insulin is impaired and doesn't function well, and this can lead to symptoms such as having to pee a lot or being incredibly thirsty, being too tired, losing weight, getting infections, and suffer from slow healing wounds. Over a period of time, these can lead to complications in your heart, your eyes, your feet, and your kidney. In fact, the Philippines has one of the highest numbers of diabetics in the region. The Philippines rank 5th behind China, Indonesia, Japan, and Thailand in the number of diabetes cases, and up to this day, remains a major concern in the country. In concern of this, a Senate Bill Act proposed by Senator Joel Villanueva has been introduced that a hospital that specializes in diabetes and endocrinology should be developed in the Philippines to be able to raise awareness of this epidemic disease and who would be able to help them. The project is a 315-bed tertiary specialized hospital that focuses on introducing a new facility specializing in diabetes and endocrinology care, the first ever in the Philippines. The site is located in the barangay of Pinyahan Diliman, Quezon City, known for its locations of various government and specialized hospitals, with a total lot area of 52,923 square meter, bounded by a major road that is Quezon Avenue and a minor road that is BIR Road. The design concept is biophilic architecture, which is an approach that connects the building occupants more closely to nature. Good architecture lets nature in is the philosophy I believe while designing this proposal. Research shows that biophilic design in a healthcare setting makes it clear that connecting people with nature during treatment and recovery is of great benefit. In designing a hospital, factors that should be considered are the function, flexibility, environment, accessibility, acoustics, security and safety, durability, orientation, efficiency, and aesthetics. The form concept is a structure of a molecule and a turtle. A molecule is a group of atoms held together by chemical bonds, while the turtle symbolizes Mother Earth that signifies good health and long life. The atoms are the users, while the chemical bonds are the spaces of the hospital connected to each other in harmony for a better function to a quality healthcare facility. The site concept is radial and linear planning. The innovations of this design are green concrete, which produces less carbon dioxide than traditional concrete and is cheap and durable. Fiber reinforced concrete. This type of concrete includes fibrous substances that increases its structural strength and cohesion, and urban roof farming, which allows for a completely organic form of farming. It allows for produce to be picked at the right time. The highlights are Healing Garden, which provides a place of refuge and promote healing in patients and staffs. Moss Walls Preserve moss walls do not require any soil, watering, or even misting but to keep the same benefit as living green walls, but aren't as expensive. Landscape Setback Which will in the front of the facade, they serve to separate the hospital building far from the road, causing buffer from the noise and serve as public spaces for visitors providing sunshade and tranquility. And Grass Plate which are efficient for pathwalks while maintaining the integrity of the surrounding area. The materials used are wood grain finish and aluminum profile louvers, which is a highly durable material while offering high resistance towards heat, acid, detergents, and UV. Low e-glass windows, which work by reflecting heat equally during the cold and hot seasons. Low VOC paint, rain screen aluminum cladding. It protects the core structure of the building from rain and wind while providing thermal insulation and structural stability, and sustainable timber panel cladding. Sustainable timber comes from sustainably managed forests where you are able to harvest wood without causing damage to the forest itself. Structural system The first is rigid steel frame construction, used as they are highly adaptable and flexible in design, especially in structures sensitive to vibrations and deflections. For the foundation, pile cap putting foundation is used as the bearing capacity is high at a shallow depth, which is the condition of the site soil capacity. 
the last for roofing system is modified bitumen roofing, known for its durability and has a wide variety of applications such as hospitals and concrete deck structures. Environmental system. The first is rainwater harvesting. The type of tank used is underground poly rainwater tanks which are made to endure an underground environment. Made from durable polyethylene plastic and is easy to install. The main hospital building is able to collect 665 cubic meters of rainwater annually. The next is daylight responsive lighting controls, which are photosensors that assess the amount and quality of natural daylight in a particular space. The last is green roof, which provides a rainwater buffer, purifies the air, reduces the ambient temperature, and saves energy. Utility system. The first is sewage treatment plant, a process of removing contaminants from wastewater. For the HVAC system, variable refrigerant flow is used. It is an air conditioning system where one outer unit and more than one inner unit are controlled. VRF consists of outer units located outside the building and indoor units used to cool or warm the living spaces inside the building. VRF offers precise comfort control, quiet operation, and good indoor quality. A generator is highly required for hospitals. Diesel fuel generators are a common option and can maintain power for an entire hospital for about 8 hours. For fire control system, a high-pressure water mist sprinkler requires only a small amount of plain water to generate exceptionally good fire safety. LED lighting are a sustainable choice as they enhance the care environment and reduce costs by saving energy and improving operational efficiency. Machine room as elevators, which are a type of traction elevator which do not have a machine room at the top of the hoistway. On to the site development plan. The main hospital building is surrounded by the service utilities. As the hospital design doesn't have a basement, they are placed separated from the hospital building. The service road is accessible from both the major and minor road. The waste management is located near the major road. Next to it is the powerhouse. The water pump and water harvest utilities are located near the minor road, while the STP, Motor Plant Engineering, Maintenance and Mortuary Department, as well as the parking for delivery of the dietary department are located at the back part of the building. For visitors, they both have entrance and exit from the major and minor road. Because the major road is noisy and traffic, I included an inlet drop off for POVs where visitors who drop off are able to walk through the landscape park. In the minor road, the only POVs to travel through are tricycles and taxis, plus there's minimal noise and traffic, so I included only a small drop off. The total parking slots of visitors and staffs are 40 slots each. Three parking slots for ambulances are provided near the emergency entrance. The lower part of the site is where the southwest monsoon or warm air travels, so above Abundant trees and landscape are located there to buffer the warm wind and traffic noise coming from the roads. Here is the site development plan along with the computed versus actual computations of development controls. The trees planted in the site and healing garden are all indigenous trees and are southeastern natives, such as the Banaba tree, Bougainvillea, and Salingbobog tree. For the elevations of the main hospital building, the total building height is 16.80 meters with 4 floors plus the roof deck. The concept of designing the elevations represents the color of nature, blue representing the sky, green representing trees which are the aluminum rain screen cladding and brown the color of earth which are the timber panel cladding acting as an accent design for the entrances of the hospital. Blue, green, and white are also the common colors usually used in hospitals for their healing properties, the white being painted concrete finish. For the west elevation where the facade is, I've placed moss walls as another accent design as well. I've only placed louvers in the east and south part of the building because that's where the sun rises and sets. Stainless steel railings are used for the parts where the roof decks and roof deck gardens are located. On to the sections, I've decided to show the section of the central healing garden and corner roof deck gardens in the cross section and the mini courtyard gardens and ramps in the longitudinal section. The central healing garden can be seen from each floor of the building from the open air hallways. On to the floor plans, there are 5 hospital zonings which are the outer zone, the second zone, inner zone, deep zone, and service zone. There are 2 entrances for visitors, the main entrance located in the left part of the plan while the secondary entrance is located at the lower part. The emergency entrance is located at the lower left part of the plan. The other 2 entrances are for staffs but is not limited to entrance for visitors coming from the healing garden. I consider the activities done by a patient when visiting a hospital. 
Located in the ground floor are the outpatient department, emergency department, pharmacy, radiology, ancillary, dialysis center, rehabilitation center, administrative, health information management, dietary, and housekeeping. A mini courtyard garden is placed between the administrative and dietary department that goes up to the roof creating a courtyard effect and giving the users a view of the garden. A chapel and gift shop are located near the entrances. I've considered using a double corridor style of planning as it is efficient for more spaces. There are 9 elevators including 3 bed elevators each floor. For the emergency exits, there are a total of 5 per floor. The mechanical and electrical utility rooms are located next to the emergency exits per floor and there are a total of 8 flights of stairs per floor plus 2 ramps. This is a hallway designed with interior greens used as a way for users to navigate themselves between the departments as they would not need to pass through hallways inside the departments itself as some of them are not accessible to the public. Plus, they are given a view of the healing garden. These are the blow-up plans of the ground floor. On to the second floor plan. This is where most of the inner and deep zones are located. The departments in the second floor are the head department offices, research and training center, maternity, neonatal care, surgical, ICU, and pediatric ICU, medical dorm residences, and central sterilizing supply room. There are family waiting areas for the maternity, surgical, and ICU departments while the surgical department has an adjacent exit facing the ramps minimalizing travel for the decision that the bed elevators are not used. The highlight of this floor is that at each corner of the plant, there are roof deck gardens located acting as resting areas for staffs so they don't have to travel far to the healing garden or go out of their designated departments. These are the blow-up plants of the second floor. On to the third and fourth floor plans, this is where the nursing wards are located. I divided the number of beds following the computation of my demand where 58% of the beds are allocated for medical, 30% for maternity, and 12% for pediatric, then dividing them by 4 bed wards, 2 bed wards, and private wards. The upper part of the plan is where the private wards are located, giving them the view of the mini courtyard garden. The lower part of the plan is where the maternity and medical two-bed wards are, and the middle right part of the plan is where the whole pediatric wards are located. The isolation rooms are located next to each emergency exit. For the middle left part of the plan, a whole roof deck garden is designed for patients to launch and relax. It also connects between the private rooms and wards. Nurse stations along with their lounges are located in the middle of the hallway. Plus, lounging areas for visitors are placed as well. Storage rooms and garbage disposal rooms are located near the emergency exits. These are the blow-up plans of the third floor. For the 4th floor plan, the plan and arrangement are similar except for the pediatric wards. It is replaced by the medical wards. These are the blow-up plans of the 4th floor. And as for the roof deck plan, this is only accessible to staffs where the rooftop farming is located and also the condensers for the VRS system. Half of the roof deck plan is walkable while the other half of it is a parapet slope roofing. I've also provided plans, two elevations and one section each for the maintenance department, multiple and engineering department, mortuary and waste management department which are separated from the main hospital building, all of them having similar elevation designs. The maintenance department having different kinds of storage rooms for maintenance, the motor pool and engineering to provide services for the vehicles, mortuary for the disease and autopsy, and waste management for the disposal of hospital waste segregated by seven types. On to the base section. This is the base section of the hallways viewing the healing garden. The type of interior greens used in the ground floor are synthetic turfs, which require minimal maintenance and living plants can be installed. Recommendations are succulents since they are also low maintenance but can adapt to any weather. 
Some type of material and non-slip floor tiles are used for the floors and mineral fiber board for the ceilings. Composite beam and columns are used as they are known for increased durability, fast construction, and corrosion protection. High angle sun rays are blocked by horizontal sun shadings. Plus, with its natural ventilation, the application of the corridor effect through the central healing garden helps the building stay appropriately warm or cool. And to the 17 line project cost analysis. Following the line-by-line -line formula, the total project development cost has come to a total of approximately 4.6 billion pesos. And lastly, the return of investment. I have gathered rates and data provided by DOH. The overall total annual income is 479.7 million pesos. Hospitals have an annual expense of 20% designated for the facility and equipment maintenance, which is 95.8 million pesos. So the total annual profit is 383 million pesos. Following the formula, the return of investment is 12 years. That is all for my caption presentation and thank you for listening. On to the walkthrough video presentation.